All right, so now allow me to give a lesson and a short lesson on the, how we can recognize a perfect square polynomial. Now, before we get further into this particular lesson right here, allow me to mention, and it is required that you must be fluent with how we factor. Okay, and so all of that skills about factoring must have been the learned and must have been the fluent before we can push that into this understanding right here because I will bring in a lot of that uh, uh, the, the material in, into this lesson here and requires you know, a, a fluency level from, from anyone viewing this video lesson here in particular. Okay. All right, so now allow me to bring in a few polynomials. And just as the, the, the title of the lesson was indicating earlier, we, got, we, learn, we will learn how to recognize any of these uh, polynomial here as a perfect square, okay? And so, now, from our days, from our lesson, and now from our lesson about uh, learning about how to factor, I brought in the following. We were introduced to a couple of special products right here. So, anytime our polynomial is in a setup of a, a square term x squared, and here I'm using capital X in my, uh, back in that video lesson right there, plus 2xy plus y squared. This special polynomial here can be factored. I mean, you can take your time factoring in that video lesson I, I explained about. You can always apply the traditional method to factor that, but the final factoring will come into a perfect square as x plus y all square. So the, the essential elements of this quick formula now is that as soon as we have a one perfect square term and a, another perfect square term, both are positive terms, a perfect square term at start and a perfect square term at the end. And then the middle term here comes out from two times of the, of the two terms without a square, two times of the two terms without a square multiply together. And that's how we can quickly recognize, as soon as we quickly recognize our polynomial to fall into this setup right here. And then we can, and then we can immediately write that without spending time doing the, the formal factoring method. Then we can just rewrite that as the perfect square of x plus y, the two terms without the power, but then add it and then square. The, the sign for that middle term being addition result in this being a positive sign. And so similarly, as, soon as, as long as we recognize in our polynomial the starting term and the ending term, both positive signs being recognized as a perfect square, as a perfect square, and the middle term once again has that two times x times y. These are the, the two terms from the starting and the be, from the beginning and the ending without the squares. So two times x times y with a negative sign, then yes, a, if we recognize our polynomial in this form right here, then after factoring, we should end up with x minus y all square. And so in this way, here's how we've learned back in the earlier video lessons about uh, factoring, and here's how we recognize this. We think of the capital X in place of the, the x here. So the lowercase x in our setup here is a capital X. So this is 2xy plus, and then that's 2 plus y squared. And so this is really just the exact formula that we've seen, and I have not, not much to explain here at this problem right here. And so that will immediately becomes uh, x, uh, y, the sign here is a plus, plus y. So x plus y, but in a perfect square, as a perfect square. And so back in the days that we learned about uh, factoring right here, then that's what I taught in that video lesson. We have to recognize each one of these terms to match with that formula in our, uh, the, with the formula that I wrote on the other board right there. And so in the same way, this next polynomial here can be recognized easily, where we can think about we let a right here, this lower lowercase a being substituted in place of the capital X in our formula. And then the b here is being, see, a is being in place of the capital X and b is being in place of the capital Y. So this setup right here, a squared minus 2ab uh, plus b squared right here is exactly capital X squared because a is x, capital X squared minus 2, capital XY plus with y squared right here. 
And so in that way, needless to say, this one here is easy enough that we can recognize it that as x, y, a, and b. The middle term here is minus, so subtraction between, that's in one pair of parentheses, is square. And once again, that's just a brief reminder of the method we've learned back then, back in the video lesson, about how we can factor that quickly as a, as a perfect square product. And then with these polynomials here, things are starting to get a little more challenging. But once again, it's all about we recognize whether the first term and the last term forms into a perfect square. So I can actually, I indeed do recognize that. The 25x squared here, we can think about that as a 5x all square. Okay? And so in that way, I can think about, I can think about uh, the 5x is being in place of the big X in our formula. Okay, and then the last term right here, I recognize that as see nine y square is recognized as three y r square, and so in that way right here, and yes, I can let the big y in our formula right here to be three three y. And that's how I recognize this entire polynomial as see. Big X is now a 5X in little case. Big Y is now a 3Y in lower case. The sign between is a subtraction. And I forgot to mention, see, we can check that the 30XY here really came from 5X times 3Y, making it 15, times 2, making it 30. And, that's what, and then now the sign in between here is a subtraction sign. That's why I place a minus right here in parentheses is square. Again, that's just a brief through of what we have learned from the video lessons about how we can factor these uh, special products to bring that, and then hopefully to speed up the process to bring that into a perfect square factor a little faster. All right, and so you can see in that way, this next one right here can be quickly factored into 2u plus 5w r square. Okay? And then my point is not to give the lesson over again of how we recognize that. So as, as I went through the three problems by far with some brief reminder, you should be able to get yourself on track from that, from, from the video lesson you've learned earlier, and then be able to apply that and make this more sped up right there. Okay, and so 4u squared plus 20uw plus 25w squared is indeed recognized. Now recognized as 2u plus 5w all squared. So these four polynomials I brought up here, they're all in terms of two variables. And then it, it will become easier when our polynomial is only one variable. So for example, in the next one right here, we have x squared minus 8x plus 16. And so now it's going to be even easier. And we can re easily recognize this x squared minus 8x plus 16 as x, the square of 16 here, is a 4. The term in between is a minus sign, so x minus, and let's double check right here. 8x, is that the same as 2 times 4 times x? That is correct, 2 times 4 times x, and the minus sign in between. That's why I ended up with x minus 4 in parentheses is square. And again, another easy one right here. Only one variable. Only one variable. a squared plus 10a plus 25. Now I can speed up the process and get straight to the final the perfect square to set up right there. So as a factor of product being a perfect square, I, I'll have a plus 5 or square. Again, my point is not to give the lesson over again from, from the beginning about how we can uh, to recognize the, how we can uh, do the factoring and all that. My point now is that think about after you have done, after that lessons you have learned earlier, that you have viewed earlier, and spent your time uh, doing a lot of exercises, especially now let's turn our focus on those uh, polynomials of one variable. I have just now erased those other ones with two variables involved. Let's only focus our attention to those uh, 
polynomials with only one variable. So now, again, back to what I was saying earlier. I'm not intending to give the lesson over and over again, the lesson about how we can recognize a polynomial as a perfect square product. That earlier method we have done have already been learned and hopefully fluent by, by viewers. But now allow me to bring in a, an alternative, a different way of recognizing it, a different way of recognizing it and hopefully making it faster. But the method I'm about to bring in here is only applicable to those uh, with one variable. Okay. I'm not saying that it doesn't work with those other two variables, but it's be, it will become more complicated and not practical for our need. So that method here, I'm teaching that just to focus on those uh, polynomial that has only one variable involved, one variable involved. And so again, we're learning, we're get, learning a different method to, com, to uh, recognize a polynomial as a perfect square, or to recognize a perfect square polynomial, okay? By the, but focusing only on those uh, one variable polynomial, okay? And so, allow me to reorganize my board space here a little bit. And so th these are the results we have already found from the, what I have explained earlier. But again, the method I've shown earlier is a review of what we have learned and that mainly we try to recognize that through the formula, okay? We try to recognize among our terms right here and to, to see how it's, it fits into our formula, to see how the, our terms right here follows the formula so that we can end up with the perfect square, okay? But then now, doing that may still be not so effective at some point, at some time, okay? And that's why I want to bring in this met method right here, this alternative method. But sadly, the, the, alter the alternative method I'm about to say is, once again, is, it's working best only with polynomial of one variable. And I should have also said coefficient one, coefficient one in the leading term here, coefficient one in the leading term, okay? And so now, allow me to roll back to the first one and think about you have done the, the, you know, similar one so many times so often. So now let's have a, a, a different way of observing it, the way how I'm seeing it. Coefficient one, the first term is a square, right? Coefficient one, whatever the middle term is, whatever the last term is, and the first term and last term got to be all positive. Those are easy to check. So first term and last term got to be positive. Okay. Now, here's how I want to see it. The last term here, I just want to make sure that the last term here, so let me now point it out. The last term being a 16, a positive 16. Positive 16 here has another truth behind the scene. Positive 16, another way of seeing it. It's the square of, positive 16 is the square of, the square of minus eight over two. Positive 16 is the square of minus eight over two. And you see the way how I wrote it so that I can point out the observation, okay? 16 is the square of, the square of minus eight over two. So now let's have a closer look. Minus eight here comes, up, comes out from the coefficient of the middle term. And then the two here, now take that at our level here as a formula. Take that at our level here as a formula. So now allow me to write that over two here in red ink to really emphasize. So the point, the main point now is that we want to recognize 16, the last constant term, as a perfect square, as the square of minus eight over two, but minus eight came from the middle term coefficient and over two, okay? And so, and so a different, and now that truly means uh, minus four all squared because minus eight over two is a minus four. And so now after that observation, after that observation, here's how I'm bringing my polynomial, x squared minus eight x plus 16. Here's how I'm bringing this into a perfect square, quick and instantly, quickly and instantly. In parentheses is the first term is x squared, now it's just x. The last term right here, the minus eight over two, minus eight over two is a minus four. I put the minus four there, and it's a square. That is our is the new method that I want to, anyone to learn from here. Okay, so uh, but again, the method the method we, I'm showing here is only working for a polynomial with one variable. 
I mean, leading coefficient, 1. OK? And so, all right, so now as a generality about the method I have just introduced, we are starting out with a given polynomial. And this polynomial here, again, in, let's observe that closely. It's a polynomial of one variable. The b and the c in our expression here are representing coefficient and constant. And so the leading term here has coefficient 1. Okay. And so, so now the, the statement comes as follows. Starting with a given polynomial in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. If, if we can recognize the constant term as the square of b over 2, again, it's all up to how we can recognize the constant term c here to equal with the, this perfect square, or the square, simply the square of b over 2. Then, if that's so, if we can recognize so, then the, the polynomial from the beginning here can be put into a perfect square, can be rewritten as a perfect square. That's what it means by can be put into a perfect square as following. The whole x squared plus bx plus c will now be simply and quickly put as a perfect square of x. See, the x term with no square, x plus the b over 2 that we recognize here, b over 2 in parentheses square. Okay, and that is a, a method right here. But again, this method here, the focus point is it needs to be done only on one variable polynomial. Okay, we only use that for one, poly, one variable polynomial. And further, it's only coefficient 1 in the leading term. And that was the reason why right at the beginning, with a starting polynomial, having no clue about that, having no clue how I can see that as a perfect square polynomial. But now in, in that observation, in that technique I was pointing out, it, it all triggered up by this observation. The constant term is recognized as a, the square of that middle coefficient, b, b is minus 8 in our case right here, b over 2. And, and so, yes, it's minus 4 all squared. That's why it's 16. So 16 is recognized as the perfect square of minus 8 over 2. That's how we recognized it. And now recogni up, upon recognizing that, minus 8 over 2 is a negative 4. So now I can see that the polynomial here at start can be instantly and quickly put into a perfect square as, in parentheses, x, no square, just x. The mi see, namely, this is plus minus b over 2, so plus minus 8 over 2, or for short, x minus 4, because minus 8 over 2 is a minus 4. So x minus 4 in parentheses all square. And that's how we can instantly bring that and put that into a perfect square. And so in that way, allow me to bring in a, a couple examples right here to really demonstrate and show how we can really apply our, our method, our new method right here, into the do, recognizing and, and putting a few polynomials into a perfect square expression like that. All right, so now in our first demonstration problem right here, so that I can, we can apply the, the method we have just learned. So let's call that now example one. The instruction of the example here is, is saying that let's write any of the given polynomial here as a perfect square. Okay, and again, to, uh, before we start, let's observe right here. In part A, the first problem in our example, what I'm having here is a polynomial, one variable, leading coefficient. 1. Okay? And so in that case right here, all I need to do, I'm going to observe 25. Well, first thing that rings a bell for me, 25 itself is already, already a perfect square. So it's making it easy. So 25 is a perfect square. So I can see that now it's the square of, all I need to check, let's check to see if 25 can be expressed as the square of the middle term, including the sign over 2. So is it true? 10, the middle term, positive this time, unlike the, the demonstration the problem I, I brought in earlier. So 10 over 2. And that is true, because 25 is the square of, of 5. And 5 came out from 10, the middle term, over 2. And so now, as soon as I recognize that, this is just our checking point right here. As long as that's passed, as long as that checking point is passed, 
our polynomial. This is how easy that is. a squared plus 10a plus 25 we equal in parentheses. The variable here, I'm rewriting it. The 10 over 2 is a 5, but the sign here is a positive sign. So I'll go plus 5. See, a, the variable, plus half of the middle term coefficient. And then with a the square. That's how I have written that as a perfect square. All right. So part B of the example here is brought in simply just as another repeated try of, uh, to apply what we have learned from, from that uh, new method. Right OK, so what we have here is a polynomial. And we are asked to write that polynomial here as a perfect square. OK, and so with the new method I have introduced here, all we have to do is just let's tackle down right at that uh, ending constant right there. It's 81. That ending constant right here, let's check to find out, let's observe to find out, and let's check to find out whether it's, can we, or whether it's equal to the square of uh, minus 18 over 2. And now in the way how I'm seeing it, that requirement here, that checking here passed simply because minus 18 over 2 is a minus 9. And minus 9 all square equals uh, 81. And that's why now I have found out and I have recognized that the constant term 81 is the square of minus 18, the middle term coefficient, over 2. Okay? And so now upon recognizing that, I don't even need to produce the next step. This is just in my thought process right here. This polynomial can now be quickly and instantly put into a perfect square as following. In parentheses, is I, I'll have y minus 18 over 2 is a minus 9. So y plus negative 9, which is y minus 9 with the square. And that's how I have uh, completely put that beginning polynomial into a perfect square. All right, so that technique that we've learned, sadly, is only limited to you know one variable, the, the polynomial and leading coefficient one, but it still has a lot of good usefulness. So let's see how it can further expand our flexibilities in terms of uh, being able to put a polynomial into a perfect square here. Because, so now, experience that we've been through so far, not only in this lesson, but from previous lesson where we were uh, primarily doing the factoring, okay, then something like this may be challenging in the, from the, you know, by the end of the earlier lesson. x squared minus 3x plus 9 fourth. What I have here is a polynomial. How do I write that polynomial here as a perfect square? How do I write that polynomial here as a perfect square? So, see, a polynomial like this, at the end of our lessons about uh, how we can factor a polynomial into a perfect square like that, then a polynomial over here was challenging, okay? Because it's not simply to recognize this as an even number, as a two times, whatever, if, if we follow the, the traditional method, the earlier method. But now with the current method we just got introduced to, this will become a lot easier, okay? And so allow me to call this polynomial here part A of the example. Okay, so here's how I'm doing it. Again, the last constant term right here is a 9 over 4. All we have to do is 9 over 4. Is this equal to or is this or can this be recognized as the perfect square of uh, minus 3 the middle term coefficient over 2? Let's check for that. And then once we check for that, then yes, we can say that 9 over 4 is recognized as the minus 3 over 2 all square. And so minus 3 over 2 is, yes, minus 3 over 2 all square is 9 over 4. Our math, our simple math can lead to that. And so that checking requirement here is passed. Okay? And so upon recognizing that, upon recognizing that the ending, the ending constant equals to the square of the middle coefficient over 2, then now I can quickly and instantly 
turn this polynomial into a perfect square. In parentheses, it's x minus 3 over 2, b over 2 being minus 3 over 2. But minus 3 over 2 is a whole fraction. Let's leave it the same. So plus minus b over 2 plus minus 3 over 2, making it minus 3 over 2 r square. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have found the perfect square expression of this polynomial. All right, so part B of the example, let's put this, let's see how we can put this polynomial here into a perfect square. And so once again, the technique we've learned here, all we do is tackle down at the ending constant right here and be able to check whether it's equal to the perfect square of the middle coefficient over 2. So 25 over 36, the middle term coefficient is a positive five-thirds, but over two. Will that be, will the square of that be equal to 25 over 36? And right now we're checking. As long as the checking is passed, that polynomial can be put into a perfect square and we have a formula for that. And so, a little further for the math, five-thirds over two is simply five over six. And so now with the perfect square, that does make it into 25 over 36. And so that means now we have recognized, we have just recognized that 25 over 36 does equal to 5 thirds, the middle coefficient, over 2, square. And so now, once upon recognizing that, our polynomial here can be easily and instantly put into a perfect square as following. In parentheses, is W plus the middle term coefficient over 2, which makes it really 5, 6. So 5, 6. W plus 5, 6, all square. And that's how I have put that polynomial into a perfect square. All right, so allow me to bring in example 3 over here to show uh, one quick process in, a thought, in your thought process that a lot of times can be useful over here. So all it is is that a lot of times you have a you are given a polynomial, and you want to ask yourself, can we put that polynomial right here as into a perfect square? Or can we rewrite that polynomial here as a perfect square? So that's why I wrote down the question here, but what I mean now is that a lot of times the question here is some question that you may want to ask yourself before we proceed into, uh, the, into putting that into a perfect square. Right there. Okay, and so, in order to answer that, the technique we've learned is here. The method we've learned is here. So all we need is to tackle down with this adding term constant right here. So the 5, can the 5 be recognized? Or can the 5, the adding constant right here, be understood as the square of uh, minus 4 over 2? That's the question we want to ask ourselves. So in order, so all we, so this question here, can the given polynomial be put as a perfect square? is equivalent logic with can the five constants right here be equal to the square of the middle term coefficient over two. Let's find out. So in this case, going a little further with the math right here, minus four over two is a minus two. R square, that's making it a four, obviously. It's not equal to five. And so in this case, what I'm seeing here is Yes, the polynomial we have looks quite similar to any other polynomials out there. In the later lessons, we will learn what class a polynomial this falls into. But now the constant term fails to equal half the square of the middle coefficient over 2. That equality fails again. So now simply this, the answer is no, we cannot, we cannot put this polynomial here as a perfect square. All right, so before we're closing down the lesson here, allow me to bring in one last remark right here at, at the end of this video lesson. But so any polynomial that we aimed at, or any polynomial that, that's aimed for being written as a perfect square, that those, any of those polynomials must be a quadratic. 
So you may have heard me using this term that, uh, prior to this lesson already in some of the earlier lessons. And here I mentioned that again. And then we will spend some time learning some more formally about a quadratic polynomial. Okay, but then once again, any polynomial that we aim to write that as a perfect square, like that, it must be a, those polynomials, we call them the quadratics. 